out of Tony Pogaccio win the 2021 Tour de France seemingly with ease. Before this year's edition, we'll take a look back at that race. Roglic and Pogaccio came into the race as co-favorites after Pogaccio had beaten Roglic in the 2020 Tour de France in the dramatic Planche de Belfi time trial, and they came in after Roglic had beaten Pogaccio at Basque Country, but seemingly avoiding each other once again. And it was a tricky start in Brittany, the first three stages. There were not too many mountaintop finishes, and that tricky start hit Jumbo Visma really, really hard early with the Opi Omi infamous crash. But we got a sneak peek, only for a couple of stages, of Roglic and Pogaccio man-marking each other on this first climb the Cote de Fossil loop, on stage one, Pagatch was a little bit off Roglic. We were seeing how would these two react to each other. In 2020 Tour de France, Roglic had pulled a lot for Pagatch. Yumbo had pulled a lot for UAE. Here we see Pierre de Latour closing Roglic attack, benefiting Pagatch, bringing him back to Roglic wheel as Roglic was trying to bridge across to Alaphilippe. But here we saw the two neutralize each other. Pagatch pulls for a little bit. Roglic doesn't take over after his attack. And that is how Alaphilippe was able to win this stage with a perfectly timed attack. They go back, Roglic and Pagaccio, they're subsumed into the group, and Wapanar tries to pull for them. And Roglic wins the sprint ahead of Pagaccio for second or third. The next day on Murder Britannia, Pagaccio wins a sprint for second ahead of Roglic. Then we got on to stage three, and this was the most important defining factor of last year's Tour de France. It wasn't stage eight, it wasn't any TT, it was this unfortunate stage which had the crash of Roglic in the run-in to this narrow downhill finish where Jack Haig also crashed out and called Brelli put Roglic to the side, and this was Roglic Tour pretty much done. He'd soldier on for a few more stages, but the man, or the two, who pushed each other so hard to such high levels in the 2020 Tour de France, one of them was gone. Roglic, the co-favorite. You see Wout looking at him like, holy, he's in a bad way. So Pagatcha's main competitor, the only man who's physiologically been on his level for the last two, three years, was gone. And so we got to the stage five TT. Pagatch had done an incredible TT on stage 20 of the 2020 Tour de France. And Roglic, I mean, he even did it. It was a crazy TT. He came like fifth or sixth, even though he was so banged up. You remember that mummy photo? But Pagatcha did another unbelievable TT, much to the chagrin of poor Stefan Kung, who could scarcely believe what he saw on this rolly course, Pog averaging 51 Ks an hour and taking big time into Jonas and really Enric Maas, all the other GC competitors. That takes us then to the first mountain stage. Calderon, Colombier combo, short descent between the two, not much recovery, and then a descent into Le Grand Bonnant. Unseasonably cool and wet conditions for the Alp stage in last year's Tour de France. Roglic is with a stagey DNF. You see Pog in the short sleeves and Gilet. A lot of other people rugged up. Ineos were trying something for Richard Carapaz. And then Pagatcha told Formolo, get on the front and shred Calderon. 8Ks, about 8.5%. And that's when Pagatcha first attacked. And this stage was the end of the Tour de France. The tour ended before the first rest day last year because Carapaz tried to follow. None of the other GC guys, Hay, Kelderman, Uran, and Co. tried to follow even Carapaz. Pagacha hit him with the second attack, and that was a wrap. This was the second to last climb of the day, and you're thinking, where does this stack up? Go check out lanternroof.com.au article link down below. We discussed it at length. Where does this stack up against his other performances, Pagatcha? It's in line. It's in line maybe with Prati de Tivo. This is the second last climb. It's wet conditions. So it wasn't like out of this world for Pagatcha's standards. And then Carapaz was sitting in no man's land on Col de Colombier. And we see the Lutschenko group behind doing much less power than we would expect, even in the sort of cool conditions. It wasn't freezing, 5.7, 5.6 etalon maybe for 23 minutes. That's much less than we'd expect in a first week final mountain test. So Carapaz heard himself trying to follow. He had no teammates to pace. There was group two dynamics. We didn't see them on camera much, but that's why the gap was so big. Like, Bagatcha's done similar watts before, and not and, and taken 10 seconds, 15 seconds on Yates and Higuita or riders like that on Prati de Tivo. Here he's done the same numbers and he took like three and a half minutes and he gave 30 seconds back on the descent. So I, I can't prove it, 
definitively. There's no footage, but I feel like the group two behind kind of started playing for second, and he gave 30 seconds back on the descent. As I said, Izaguirre and Mike Woods caught him on that descent. I compared with Lutschenko, and but he already knew he had the tour wrapped up. And you can see 2020 Tour de France, Pogacar maybe even a better level when Roglic really pushed him to the max. But after that first mountain stage and the first TT, Pogacar had taken an unassailable lead barring crashes with just Arden and Col de Portet to come as the really hard mountaintop finishes, not including Wout van Aert, about five minutes ahead of Jonas Vingegaard before the teen stage. And here we saw again, like, steady pacing, Rui Costa there on the final mountaintop finish for UAE Team Emirates. Look at everyone's rugged up. Everyone's got long sleeves on. A lot have got jackets on. Pagach is the only guy with arms exposed in these cool, rainy conditions up to teen. Ineos tried again for Carapaz. And Ineos, you know, I feel like they could have got second as well. But they, they fought at least in the first week for the first place. But Pagacha just looked back, said, this is... I mean, his coach said, his coach Indigo San Milan said on the first rest day, on this teen attack, it wasn't an attack. He was literally doing his tempo or his threshold and he took more time because everyone else was already playing for second. The only wobble, Paddy Pagacha in the Tour de France last year, which gives us hope for a competitive contest this year with the Jonas Roglic led Jumbo Visma squad coming along is Mont Ventoux stage 11. They did the double Ventoux, but it was unfortunately a descent finish to Malocene, unbelievably won by Wout van Aert from the breakaway, but this stage had warm, dry conditions and Ineos put on a hard pace all day and Jonas was able to set, the, I think, the new record from Chalet Renard to the top of Mont Ventoux. And you can't tell me that Tadej Pogacar wasn't trying. Jonas dropped him in the last three, four kilometers of this climb, maybe even less, and he put good time into him, over 30 seconds by the top in a very short space of time. Pog went backwards. He's looking back. He actually got caught by Uran and Carapaz over the top, which saved him because the descent was extremely fast. Jonas is like less than 60 kilos, and all that work was undone as he was caught on the descent and gained no time at all. But that was the only wobble for Pog. Of course, Col de Porte, Arden. He tried to drop the guys properly again. He wasn't able to drop them and put in more time, but he was able to take back-to-back -back mountain stage wins and win his second Tour de France in Paris with what was almost a flawless three weeks from the Slovenian. But we will see this year whether he will be worried about Jonas Vingegaard. But are you worried about Vingegaard, for instance? Uh, why should I be worried? But I hope you enjoyed this recap. Always good to refresh the memory of how time was taken, how the race played out in the previous year. I know my memory gets fuzzy. If you want to see our huge preview of the Tour de France, it drops this weekend on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. Don't miss out on that. And I'll see you with day-to-day -to -day Tour de France coverage on this channel as well. Ciao.